All right. So there have been a few changes. Um, one that's really mostly of interest to Bob or other people doing cur serious curatorial work is that when you touch a category like uh, community, for example, we load up the corresponding category page from the wiki. And at this point, it would be good to mention that I am not using caching anymore. There is no local cache of uh, web pages of HTML. Um, I did the, I actually went ahead and built a database of not only the wiki, but also all of the forum posts. And even compressed, it goes to six, it got as high as 60 megabytes. And that's without a full text index, which was what I was planning to do next. And that just struck me as unwieldy. I'm happy to have a conversation about that. I know Bob has got a, 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 an alternate perspective on the situation, but this particular uh, version does not use a cache and its database is under two megabytes compressed. So it's much more, much more tractable. Um, but as you move to, from category to category, we load up the corresponding category page. Everything else still behaves the way it used to. Um, in that regard, uh, I got all the forums up. So J Beta, J Chat, J Database, J General, J Programming, and J Source. Um, I did find. So I, I lied to you last week when I said that um, everything would fit. There is a post from 2016. that I now cannot find. I thought it was in January of 2016. Oh, maybe, yeah. This one almost doesn't fit. There's another one that goes right off the page. So I do need to come up with another mechanism for, for showing uh, the forums, uh, some sort of scrolling mechanism or paging mechanism. This isn't going to fly uh, in the general case of, of the forums. Uh, another thing that's different is search. So for search, I am using the remote services and I search not just the wiki, but I also search the forums. So if you go looking, if you go looking for say dyadic transpose, so the words that you typed in should actually become part of uh, the table of contents on the left for reasons that we'll get to in a moment. And you get two separate sets of, oops, excuse me, two separate sets of search results. These are the wiki search results and they look, uh, I decided just to show them in or in the order in which they come back from the search engine on the assumption that that's the uh, order, that's relevance ordered. Uh, if that's not true, somebody, somebody let me know, but I assume that's the case. So you can load up each of them in turn or jump around. But I also show forum results uh, ordered again in the order in which they came back within each forum. So if you don't think J chat is likely to have anything interesting on, on dyadic transpose, you might jump directly to J programming uh, and see, see what the results look like. Now, the reason I put it into the table of contents that way is that I figure there's no reason search results should be ephemeral. So if you're looking for uh, other things, say random fixed seed, we'll go ahead and add that to the table of contents as well, and you'll get the results for that. So in a sense, you can think of this table of contents as being a window into the entire J software website, not just code.jsoftware.com, the wiki, but also www.jsoftware.com, which is where the, the forum posts are uh, hosted at this point. And you essentially get a single integrated view into all of that material, plus all the searches that you've done. Uh, if they start to pile up and they're becoming less interesting to you, we do have a clear searches button that will take them all away, but you should feel free to go ahead and put new searches in uh, whatever, whenever you wish. So Ed, what's the significance of the red bar and the kind of gray line there? It looks like a histogram. Sure. So the red bars are uh, document counts for uh, the corresponding section of the table of contents. So community has a boatload of documents because it has a fair number of children. Actually, the, the big contributor is uh, user groups, the New York City J users group uh, meeting notes mm -hmm. that bar wide. 
Uh, by contrast, blogs is pretty modest, so its bar is fairly small. Frameworks is larger, and so on. The gray bar is your scroll bar. Uh, so if you move your mouse into the gray bar area, the gray bar turns violet, and that's how you scroll up and down the table of contents. So, when you uh, get so that's the, where you are? That's where you are. Mm. And then if you move out, the bar turns gray again. And you can navigate from subcategory to subcategory. So it's just does, a mechanism. Does the le length indicate anything there? Length of what? The, you get it's a little gray line on like on top of the red line looking up above there, and they're different lengths. Oh, that's just um, a representation of the text right. of the category. So the the gray lines that you see up here are just meant to take the place of the text, the words. Oh, okay. So it's, uh, it's literally a character count for the title. Uh, it's a pixel count. Yeah, okay. I, I look yeah. at how wide the word, the phrase would be uh, in pixels and I draw a gray line that's that width. Yeah. It's just, a, it's just an orientation visual, not to surprise you mechanism that apparently isn't working very well because it wasn't obvious what was going on. Maybe if they were darker, the same color as the as the text. One of the other things sense. I'll point out is when you're in the white section, that's when you click and make your selection. If you go back over to the gray section and drag the white, the, the selection will stay and it'll be that darker blue. So until yeah, you, until, I'm, yeah. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Okay. Um. Which I don't think is a bad thing. You just have to remember to go over to the white to select. You won't be able to select in the gray. Yeah, I'm the wrong guy to pass judgment on this mechanism, but I got used to it pretty quick. Um, yeah. And it, it seems fairly natural to me now. The one thing that bothers me is that if you do go up, you actually wind up selecting the collapsed categories and that doesn't work very well. Mm -hmm. And then when you move over, it jumps and it's not at all obvious what just happened to you. And I, uh, what I think I'd like to do is animate that paging up or paging down to wherever you uh, touched the touch the gray rectangle, so it's a little less disorienting when it happens. But that's a that's a minor thing. Mm -hmm. And that's about it for this week. Um, questions or comments? I'd be very happy to to take at this point. Uh, it looks it looks really nice. I think maybe just a an intro page explaining kind of what you just said, you know, the significance of the bars and would be good. I, but. What, what I need to do is implement it better. So I don't need an explanation page, but it's a, so I, I take your point, but it's not exactly the point that you're making, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, I just need to do a better job presenting it visually, I think. So you've given me something to think about and I appreciate that. One thing that might help for me that that violet color is very subtle from in on my screen. It, it, um, yeah. I almost can't see it. Okay. I, when you point it out to me, I know look for it, but until then, I I didn't couldn't tell it from an artifact of my of my vision. Gotcha. All right. Well, I don't want anybody questioning their their sanity. So, all right. Maybe I'll try. I, I will try making it darker. The the uh, other place move move your cursor off it and back onto it because you get the effect of it graying and then changing color. So, right, but I think the point uh, David was making is that it's just it's a it's too subtle a transition, and if you're if you don't happen to be watching when it happens, you might miss that there was a change. So I one of one of the things I did uh, in the most recent version was I darkened the horizontal bars to make them a little to make them stand out a little more. And there's no reason why I can't intense increase the intensity of the currently violet bar and or violet stripe and make it. Um, more more visible i think and, and one cool. other suggestion i have yeah please um some of these some of the time these these names are clickable and it brings up a page and other times they're not i would suggest when they are clickable use the blue color that's normally used for hyperlinks so that people will know that that's a hyper you know they'll, they'll have uh, some intuition there so this is something that doesn't come across very well uh, in a demo unfortunately it's something you only realize when you use it um, there is no clicking in this interface with one ah. exception that I haven't shown you. There is only hovering. Hmm, okay. I've got a whole philosophical thing about that that we could get into, but um, the, 
really everything or almost everything should bring up something. I mean, exceptions would be search, what, or I don't really have anything to show you. Um, in, uh, but actually, even though, like, what, since you put in the categories so that they display, I think everything you hover over, hover over displays something. Almost everything. Search does not. Nuvoke obviously does. Well, the Nuvoke doesn't really. Um, I, oh yeah, I made it. it I made, and, and I made hover it. Over the reference for a page for Nuvoke. Hover over search um, for a second. Beg your pardon. Hover over search for a second. I think you'll see it changes. Yeah. There. Uh, yeah, I think that may be an accident. To be honest. Yeah, David, I, I take your point. Um, I think the answer is probably to make sure that no matter what you hover over, something reasonable pops up. Because I, I think we could probably do that. And then we wouldn't need to distinguish between two different types of links or, as I think of them, sensitive spots. And just from recognizing voices, I might guess that that's Raul that's asking those questions. Oh, Raul, I'm sorry. I beg your pardon. <laughs> that's I can't. I didn't even know that you were on. I can't see any video at this point because I, I guess you don't when you're sharing your screen unless you uh, are more skilled. Oh, you don't have a sidebar? Huh. Yeah, well, you, you'll either have a sidebar or you'll have a drop down that is maybe compressed right now. I see. And if, if you find it and you click on it, you'll see all of us. But uh, Well, that'll be nifty. Yeah. And it's, it's either a sidebar. I, I'm seeing it right now as a sidebar, but it, I've also seen it as a pop up if I'm going full screen. But because I think it, it I'm going to save that for another time. I'm not obviously seeing yeah. what the answer is. Yeah. Um, does anybody want to kick around the question of whether to have a probably 100 megabyte cache that would have to be downloaded? It doesn't seem totally ridiculous, maybe slightly, but how often? Mm-hmm. Well, true, true. Um, okay. The, so the other question is, what's the incremental benefit? So when I was fooling with the cash uh, at some point um, uh, earlier on in the in the exercise, uh, I was struck by how the cash was not much faster than uh, loading up pages from the server. Uh, on the connection I had in uh, the United States. Hmm. And I think what's going on there is that in that particular scenario, I suspect that the true cost, the bulk of the cost was not the line time or the server time. The bulk of the cost was the parsing and rendering time in the browser or in the web view. And that's that you're sort of stuck with, uh, whether you're using a local cache or uh, pulling pages off a server. So I'm, and I haven't done any formal measurement. I'm not even sure how I how I do it really um, to be sure about that. But my, my guess is that the incremental benefit of that 100 megabyte, downloading that 100 megabyte file, however often would be pretty modest. Mm -hmm. um, the other reason for doing it, now I've got, how do I get rid of this? Uh, the other reason for doing it would be to be able to do local searches, which I was very enamored of. Um, I'm not as convinced of that anymore either. Um, these are, well, you mentioned threading off search last week as a way of uh, keeping the application responsive, but uh, one thousand, two thousand. Okay, so it's under two seconds to get results back for both the forums and the wiki. I'm not sure that 100 megabyte file is worth it to get searches down to, say, 100 milliseconds. Um, yeah, it I doesn't sound like it if that's the difference. Well, the other thing I'm thinking about is right now we've got and it, it, the answer to this may be immaterial because of I'm not sure what's in your cache. It is Are all the web pages in your cache? Uh, when I had a cache, all the wiki pages were in it, and all the forum posts were in that, it. And that was the 60 megabyte, is that right? Yeah. Um, so what I'm thinking is right now we've got something that whenever you hover, it goes out and grabs that page. 
and it's yes. very responsive, which is excellent. Yeah. What I'm looking at is what does that mean to the server? You're moving your mouse around is hitting the server a lot of times. That's true. Um, that's an interesting point that I admit I never thought about. And, and so what I was thinking on my walk today was that you, you've mentioned that hover, um, you know, you, you're predominantly hover, which I am entirely in favor of because it's so responsive. It's so quick. It changes how you look at the information. But, and I'll, I'll be interested to see, to see what we haven't seen that you use click for. But from my memory, what you, previously I heard that when you click on something, that's when you kind of lock that page. So you go to other pages, you can yeah. always get back to the page that you're clicked on. Is that right? That is that is right, and I'll, I'll sort of shh. So for example, if we go to community IRC bots, I wonder what that was about. Uh, normally, if you wanted to say scroll this web page, you yeah. couldn't. I, I, I would love to be able to scroll it in place. So right now, operate my mouse wheel, for example, and just scroll that page. That would be ideal. I can't talk to the web view, web view that way, as far as I know. So that's not possible. But what you can do is, if you click, which I just did, uh, as Bob said, you lock down that page. And even though hovering loads up other pages, it's your default now. So if you come over here to the web page, this is the, to, excuse me, to the web view, the community IRC bots page is the one that will load up and you can then you can then scroll it. I, um, I'm not sure I would be too concerned about the load with I I I definitely I mean it's a concern and I'd I'd try and get information on it like talking to Chris or something. But um it's gonna be so small compared to like a video stream in terms of at least volume of information. The the overhead's gonna be number of requests rather than than um volume than than throughput, I think. Um so uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that um, I'd worry too much at this stage about that issue. It's something you might want to circle back on later, though. I guess another consideration is that I, I think just by default, by being on the web, you're taking advantage of caching services. So it might actually. I know that no, that's probably not true. Now that I, now that I think about, yeah, it. I don't think J Software is behind a CDN, although maybe it should right. be. Maybe we should throw chip in some money and give them. Get, uh, get them a CDN support. I, I guess, Bob, the other perspective on this is I would love to give Chris that problem. <laughs> yeah. I would love to drive traffic to the point where uh, the server would, the server or the service would need to be upgraded. That's, so, that's not a serious point. That's a humorous point. I'll tell, I'll tell you my solution then. My solution right. is when you hover, you'd be hitting everything that's cached. When you click on something, you'd go up to the website. And what, what would that achieve? It would mean you could hover to your heart's content. It's not even going to the server. No, nothing, no traffic. When you well, the first, the first hit would have to go. I mean, if you don't have it in cache already, you'd, you'd have to. When you, you click probably, on you'd it. Probably, Well, no, I mean, you, you, unless you're downloading the entire site, you're going to have to load the pages at some point. No, that's what I'm saying is you would you would download the entire site. That's the 60 megabyte or 100 megabyte file we're talking about. You do that once. It has the potential to be out of date, which is one drawback. But if you click on a page, you will go to the site and actually retrieve what's there. So that clicking would be a way of getting the most recent version if you were concerned? Yes. I see. And it would also give you in full web interactivity when you clicked on something. Uh, I, you lost me. You could edit in it. You oh, I think in an edit if you clicked on it. I think you. Oh, you know there is one other thing that um, it does that I forgot to mention. So I don't know, um, Bob, if you've tried to log in in the web view. Mm, um, no, I haven't done that yet. No. All right, it it might be worth a try. But the other thing is now uh, I implemented something where if you double click, it loads up the current page in Safari, okay. on the Mac. I yeah. don't. There was a marvelous post about how to do this cross-platform that unfortunately didn't work, um, but you, it will work uh, for Safari on the Mac at this point. 
And the the event that's triggering that is a double click, right? Double click, yeah. And exactly. then it automatically goes to whatever your default browser is, which you can set. No, unfortunately, the only code I could find launched Safari. So it's Safari, and you can only do it on a Mac at this point. Okay. Um, I've run into one or two things where I need to make them cross-platform, and right now they, they only work on a Mac, and that is one of them. Well, anyway, my, my solution to the how we would use the cache is you might download, you well, you, you could also, I mean, if you want to get really fancy, you could download an increment so that when you had a current cache and you decided to refresh, it would only refresh the, the recent changes up to the point. Right, where, right. Um, so you could reduce traffic that way too. But the point right. being that if you click on something, you're no longer going to the cache, you're automatically going out to the web and pulling right off to the, to the server. Right. Now the advantage just, to I, the advantage yeah, to having it on site is you actually can be off grid. You don't have to be hooked into everything. That that is a whole separate thing, and I yeah we would have to decide that that was a a buyer value as it were, hmm. um, that people wanted to be off grid and still have access to this, and and we might we might in fact decide that that's true. I, I I just for myself for development, um, even the amount of downloading that I have to do just to build the local database that I've got, which is much much smaller, uh, is a significant delay, and I I was finding it quite frustrating. And I was trying to imagine asking somebody to live with that uh, worse by an order of magnitude, and it, it just or two. And it yeah, was just no, I I agree magnitude. with you, and because I I did the same thing in your early versions and. It's manageable, it's but it? yeah, it's manageable, but but you don't want to have to go through that every time you get into this thing. Right. But if you had There's... something on your computer that had already been downloaded once, true, true, you, you're you're just as quick, and and you don't have to. Um, well, again, it's a good point. We can talk to Chris and see whether the volume of hits is an issue, not just the volume of information. Right. Uh, and I, I guess one way we could approach this is to say, let's see if we have a problem. Yeah. So if we <laughs> deliver this and Chris says uncle, um, <laughs> at that point, maybe we think about alternate approaches, including a, an enormous an enormous local cache. Now, well, it's, it's good not to optimize too early. Exactly. Don't tune too That's soon, good. as they say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, something that I did notice the very first time I opened this up and was going off the, the server and everything, the first thing I noticed, the first area that I noticed was that I didn't have access to the forums. So it actually told me that the I, I got in once and then the next time I tried, it told me the page was not available. And I didn't know whether this was something that had been set up with the forum site that if, if you were trying, because I was going through a number of different uh, pages and it may just have been a fluke that at some point that server was down at that time I was testing because uh, I've never seen it again. That's why I, didn't I, I have run into similar problems actually, Bob, with the yeah. forums. And what seems to be going on is that if you try to get in with HTTP, you will sometimes have a problem. You'll be rejected. Uh, I was running into that with the the uh, links I was building in my database. I was I was using HTTP links because that's what the forum uses uh, when it's linking to its own material uh, in a, a set of search results, for example. Um, if you use HTTPS, which I do now exclusively for the forums, well, for everything, uh, it goes through. I've never had a problem that okay. way. Yeah. And it's transient, is it, when it was HTTP? Because HTTP? I didn't notice it all yeah. the time. No, sometimes, sometimes it would work. Typically, I found it would not, but you're right. Sometimes it did. Yeah. All right. Um, I guess that's it. Uh, in terms of what I hope to do next, there are a number of bugs that I hope to fix. Uh, I'm going to try to come up with a scrolling mechanism for um, forums or a mechanism for managing large numbers of, uh, of posts in a, in a subject. Uh, and I'll respond to offline requests. Bob has been pretty good about um, finding things that are wrong and, and making requests for new features. And I really appreciate that. Um, 
And that's it. Thanks very much. Not wanting to constrain you, but I think you could use the same language for the forum posts as you're using on your left table uh, with the lines and only show up when you're hovering over it. Yeah, I, I, I think that that could work um, probably pretty well. Um, and obviously it's something that people would already have become accustomed to if they were going to become accustomed to it at all. Exactly. So yeah, you, I may well, I may well do that. Yeah, I, I, that's what I was thinking is it's a, it's a form that you see once and it's repeated. Yeah, and it wouldn't take any more training. And it would also extend if you happen to get to a year where there was more posts, more threads than you could accommodate, you could do the same. Yes, thing. yes. Yeah, I'm starting to I'm starting to have visions of a reusable user interface component. We'll we'll see how that goes.